it's a pleasure to be here and have the opportunity to contribute with leading international fungal education, uh, presenting you some basic concepts on the etiology, pathogenesis, and clinical manifestations of invasive candidiasis. Our challenge for today is to recognize the spectrum of diseases caused by candida to appreciate some difference in terms of clinical forms of invasive candidiasis, to be aware of risk factors and conditions of candidemia, and to understand the pathogenesis in invasive candidiasis. Uh, the spectrum of candida uh, disease in human beings is very large. It's usually, uh, we see usually superficial infections caused by candida, that's a colonizer, uh, from the gastrointestinal tract, from the vagina, from the oral cavity, and uh, in specific populations you may have oropharyngeal candidiasis as patients with AIDS, with uh, TC, uh, immunodepression. You may have vaginitis in humans. It's a very common complication. 70% uh, of the humans the, 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 the women will develop at least one episode of candida vaginitis along her life. 5% uh, of these humans may have relapse of candida vaginitis. Then we have a, a second step that's development of deep-seated infections, but local invasive uh, candida infections that are usually related to uh, complication of intrabdominal uh, surgery, like in uh, patients with candida peritonitis, or a complication, an infection that follow patients on peritoneal dialysis, the development of uh, peritonitis uh, related to the infection of the dialysis, uh, as well as esophageal candidiasis in, that may happen in patients with AIDS or in patients under critical acute uh, critically ill patients uh, in intensive care units, receiving antibiotics, developing metabolic uh, disorders. And finally, you have the most serious uh, consequence of candid infection, that's the motogenous infections, candidemia, that may be uh, related or not to the disseminated to dissemination to other organs. And as a result of the dissemination, you may have uh, skin lesions, eye lesions, you may develop chronic infection of the liver, uh, or osteomyelitis, endocarditis, uh, several complications that may arise of a persistent candidemia. And this is going to be uh, the emphasis of our presentations. When we talk about invasive candidiasis, most of the patients are related to patients who develop only candidemia, but if you don't treat early those patients, you may have deep-seated uh, consequence, it's if the tissue uh, candidiasis. Uh, candidemia is the most commonly diagnosed form of candidiasis, usually by blood cultures, but the sensitivity of blood culture is very low uh, and mortality uh, attributable to this condition may, may, uh, may be as high as 40%, even if an adequate and fungal therapy is provided to the patients. Candida albicans is the species most commonly found in patients with candidemia. However, there is a global shift uh, to the increasing rates of non-albicans candidemia. Uh, what is a concern? Because uh, some of those non-albicans species may be refractory resistant to, the, to several antifungal uh, drugs. Uh, manifestations of invasive candidiasis. Uh, especially deep-seated candidiasis may be related to uh, direct inoculation of candida in stereocyte as a complication of a surgery, as I mentioned before, gastrointestinal surgery or a neurological surgery with uh, uh, infection of uh, the organs, or uh, you may have a patient with candidemia that's not diagnosed, and then you have a dissemination uh, of candida from the blood to different uh, organs like uh, eyes, central nervous system, or even endocarditis, as I mentioned uh, before. Uh, why, should we, why should we care about candidemia? There is an increasing rate of candidemia in tertiary care hospitals around, around all the world. 
this is just one example. This is a population-based study that was conducted in France. The denominator for these studies, the full population of France, the denominator are the case of candidemia, and you may see that along the period from 2001 to 2010, there was an increase uh, rising the incidence of uh, uh, candidemia. This is related to the high number of patients at risk. Uh, there is no specific sign and symptoms of candidemia. It's commonly uh, misinterpreted as uh, a sepsis, a refractory sepsis by a multi-resistant bacteria. Clinicians start increasing the spectrum of the biotics instead of using appropriate and fungal therapy and this increased the possibility of death in critically ill patients. Uh, this is another population-based study that was conducted uh, in the Atlanta area in the United States where you can see the incidence of candidemia in different strata of age patients uh, uh, lower than one year, especially uh, uh, neonates with less than one kilogram are very susceptible to candidemia. Fortunately, in the last years, we started to use prophylaxis against candida in this population, and you may see that uh, compared to 1993, uh, the, the period of 2008-2011 was associated with a substantially decrease in the number of candidemia in uh, children uh, lower than one year. Otherwise, there was a simultaneous increase in the occurrence of candidemia in uh, patients higher than 65 years old because they develop all kinds of degener degenerative disease, they develop cancer, uh, they need uh, intensive care support and they are uh, under risk of developing of uh, candidemia. Uh, there is a, a strong difference in terms of the occurrence of candidemia in neonates and children. If you compare the North Hemisphere and the South Hemisphere, the rates are completely different. Uh, as you may see here, in Latin America, this is a mood center study, conducted 2008 2010, uh, 600 patients were evaluated, and 24% of this case risk was related to candidemia that occurred in patients uh, less than one year. Lots of neonates uh, developed candidemia. If you contrast with the North Hemisphere, this is a casuistic from USA, you may see that only 3% of more than 2,000 cases of candidemia were reported in the same age. And uh, it's really uh, different. Uh, uh, the geography may impact in terms of incidence rates, natural history, species distribution, and mortality of candidemia. Uh, the problem with neonatal candidiasis is not just the, the mortality rate. They have a huge morbidity because uh, it's very common to see persistent candidemia in neonatal candidiasis and you have dissemination to the central nervous system and sequels are very, neurologic sequels are very common uh, in, in the setting of patients. Candida albicans and parapsilosis uh, respond for more than 80% of the case. Uh, and uh, you may uh, require uh, more ventilatory support, uh, you, you may uh, prolong the hospital stay and, and, and get infected by other pathogens and, and this increase substantially the mortality in this specific uh, group. Uh, this is a very busy slide but I want to uh, tell to you that uh, we have some uh, species that are more common uh, related to candidemia, albicans, tropicalis, parapsilosis, and glabrata. Uh, the geography impacts in their prevalence. In the north hemisphere, you see more candida glabrata than you see in the south hemisphere countries. Candida albicans and tropicalis are most virulent than parapsilosis and crusade. And then you have some uh, less frequent species as Dubliniensis, Lusitania, and Guillermondi that are reported in, in, in a few cases all over uh, the world. Uh, despite the geography, uh, you may have different scenarios of species causing candidemia related to the fungal prophylaxis. As you may see here, uh, there is a strong influence and impact of prophylaxis either with uh, fluconazole or with other drugs that may increase the number of known species 
candida causing candidemia, especially candida glabrata and candida parapsilosis. The pathogenesis of candidemia is very uh, uh, related to basically two aspects. The first one, uh, you, you should remember that can, candida are colonizers of the normal uh, flora of human skin, uh, gut, and genit tract, uh, genitourinary tract. Uh, it means that invasion uh, may occur by translocation. Candida may translocate from the gastrointestinal tract to the blood, or you may either have uh, the adherence of candida to blood surface uh, surrounded catheter, catheters, uh, especially intravenous catheters, intravascular catheters, where you may have the formation of biofilm that make uh, easier to candida to persist in that catheter and disseminate through the organism once the, the catheter is located in the, in the, in the intravascular uh, area. Uh, then those are the two main uh, possibilities for developing candidemia. Uh, one is catheter-related candidemia, intravascular catheter-related candidemia. The second is translocation from the gastrointestinal tract in critical patients, in patients with cancer who receive chemotherapy, uh, what uh, increase the possibility of gastrointestinal translocation. Uh, the risk population is mostly represented by critical U patients, as I mentioned. Uh, they, they most of, almost 50% of episodes of candidemia are documented in this area. Uh, also, patients with cancer who receive chemotherapy, they may develop neutropenia, mucosides that are associated with high risk of, of uh, uh, translocation and disseminated, dissemination. Hemodialysis, you have a catheter in place for the hemodialysis and it, it increases the possibility of contamination. And finally, abdominal surgery, repeated laparotomies, anastomotic linkage that may uh, increase the possibility of intra-abdominal contamination by candida and sepsis uh, related uh, to invasive candidiasis without providing uh, candidemia. This is a deep-seated infection that starts in the uh, intraperitoneal cavity, uh, develops sep sepsis, and rarely those patients uh, develop fungemia with blood cultures positive. Uh, this is uh, uh, another perspective to understand uh, the risk conditions for candidemia. You have the days of uh, admission along the uh, ICU admission, and then you have a summatory of risk conditions that are exposed to the patient. You start with antibiotics that change the microbiota, and then you put a catheter in place, an intravenous catheter that may be contaminated and increase the risk of candidemia. You have other conditions that I mentioned, surgery, dialysis, the use of steroids, total parental nutrition, uh, gastrointestinal mucosal disruption, uh, and Finally, you have a transition from a patient that has a low colonization, a low burden of candida, to a patient that has high colonization, multiple sites colonized by candida, and at this point, you have a patient with more than 10, 15 days of exposition to several uh, risk conditions for candidemia, and then you are going to see candidemia in almost 10% of the, patient, the patients who uh, present this uh, history of exposition. Uh, most of the patients will develop just fever, fever refractory to uh, antibiotics. Uh, no specific signs or symptoms are uh, predictable of candidemia. Uh, you may see some uh, fundoscopy uh, alteration related to the deep-seated infection of the eye, but this may happen in 2 to 15 percent of the patients. In, uh, it, it, otherwise, you may uh, you may have patients who develop sepsis, who develops a systemic inflammatory response that's related to the presence of candida uh, in, the, the, in the bloodstream and uh, a huge inflammatory response with uh, fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, uh, neutropenia or lots of uh, neutrophils in circulation and uh, progressive deterioration of the patients. Uh, in this condition, the mortality rate in critical ill patients may be very high. Uh, it may range from 
40 to 70 percent, depending on the geography of the patients. Uh, it may be associated to the time of the diagnosis, it may be associated to the clinical support that is available in that particular center, in the species that's causing uh, candemia. Uh, we, we have lots of uh, factors that are associated with the prognosis of candemia. Uh, the main factors associated with uh, mortality are the age, the patch to score, the number of comorbidities, some species of candida, as I mentioned, albicans and tropicalis are, are, are far more virulent than parapsilosis. It's very important also the time and the choice of antibiotic drug uh, and uh, the management of the, the focus of infection. If you have a patient with intrabdominal uh, candidiasis and you have an abscess, you should drain the abscess. If you have a catheter-related uh, candidemia, you should remove the catheter, otherwise, despite all antifungal therapy, the patient is going to die. Uh, as a summary, we may say that candidemia is the most common form of invas invasive candidiasis. Increasing number of patients are at risk worldwide. Invasive candidiasis results from a combination of uh, factors that contribute to alteration of tissue barriers, to translocation in the gastrointestinal tract. Early clinical manifestations are known specific and unfortunately, mortality rates range between 30 to 75 percent and we to try to do our best to prevent this kind of complication. And once you have a patient with documented candidemia, please start appropriate antifungal therapy as soon as you can. Thank you so much for your attention.